Are you ready to be terrified? Join us on a journey through the dark, twisted mind of one of America's most notorious outlaws. John Wesley's life was filled with bloodshed, betrayal, and terror. From his deadly duels to his chilling confessions, we bring you 10 terrifying facts that will leave you on the edge of your seat. Take advantage of this spine-tingling experience. So, without further delay, brace yourself for some of the most horrifying facts about John Wesley Harden. In the annals of criminal history, few figures evoke as much dread and fascination as John Wesley Harden, a notorious outlaw whose life was marred by a trail of bloodshed and violence. Born on May 26, 1853 in Bonham, Texas, Hardin's early years offered little hint of the terrifying path he would eventually tread. This article delves into the chilling details of his criminal exploits, his ruthless encounters with law enforcement officers, and the eerie events surrounding his life and death. The Path to Infamy Growing up in a post-Civil War South, Hardin was influenced by the turmoil of the era, which may have contributed to his later criminal behavior. He came from a family with Confederate sympathies, and his father, James Gipp Hardin, was a Methodist preacher who believed in strict discipline. Despite his religious background, Gipp Hardin was known to be a stern and sometimes violent figure. John Wesley Hardin's involvement in criminal activities began at a young age. He was known to be a troublemaker from his youth, and his penchant for violence and lawlessness grew as he got older. The Maiden Crime it mainly indicates the first ever crime he conducted before being frequent in that activity. The Maiden Crime is a significant and often cited episode in the life of John Wesley Hardin, illustrating the early emergence of his propensity for violence and setting the stage for his later notoriety as an outlaw and gunfighter. In August 1868, when he was just 15 years old, Hardin became involved in a confrontation with a formerly enslaved person named Mage. The altercation escalated, and Hardin ended up shooting and killing Mage. This tragic event indeed marked the beginning of Hardin's criminal life. It was his first documented criminal act, foreshadowing the violence and trouble that would define much of his future. This incident and his upbringing in a turbulent post-Civil War South likely contributed to the formation of his violent and lawless tendencies. The $4,000 Bounty the year was 1878, when bounty hunters roamed the frontier like wolves on the hunt, and the promise of gold had a magnetic pull on the brave and the desperate. News had spread like wildfire through dusty saloons and remote homesteads alike. A staggering bounty of $4,000 lay in wait for the courageous soul who could finally capture the elusive outlaw, John Wesley Hardin. In the small, sun-soaked town of Dusty Creek, nestled at the edge of civilization, a weathered, wanted poster fluttered ominously on the sheriff's office wall. A motley assembly of prospectors, lawmen, and thrill-seekers gathered beneath the swaying sign of the local saloon, whispers of adventure and riches curling like smoke in the air. But unfortunately, none could catch his glimpse as he swerved his path abruptly. Finally, his craft demeanor was broken by Texas Rangers and local authorities in 1877 on a train in Pensacola. Killed Snoring Man, John had a fantastic grasp over guns. Even his dilly-dally moves were enough to kill a man. One night in August 1871, after finishing his gambling session with his cousin Jip Clements, a rancher friend named Charles Cougar went on drinking. Later they were so drunk that they had to stay in that hotel. In the middle of the night, Hardin suddenly woke up after hearing his friend snoring and shouted several times to wake Cougar so that he could get a peaceful night. But he failed his mission. So, irritated by the lack of response, drunkenly fired several bullets through the shared wall in an apparent effort to awaken him. But unfortunately, poor Cougar was hit by that careless shot and instantly died. The Death of the Famous Charles Webb It is nothing new for Hardin to kill law enforcement officers. Now you may say it was for ensuring his freedom from imprisonment. Most of the time, it was like that. Deputy Sheriff Charles Webb was always on the side of justice and during his duty, he heard about the notorious Hardin being seen in Comanche, Texas. As a righteous lawman, he went there to observe how events folded out in that man's presence, and he encountered Hardin. Even though Webb initially claimed to Hardin that this encounter was a coincidence, when Hardin invited him for a drink, he drew his gun, which triggered Hardin's layman to fire at Webb. 
This vigorous gunfight took his life on the spot. The Sutton-Taylor feud, embedded in the violent tapestry of Texas history, is the Sutton-Taylor feud, a bloody conflict that drew Hardin into its lethal embrace. His prominent notoriety in the Sutton-Taylor feud came from his part in killing two lawmen. DeWitt County Deputy Sheriff J.B. Morgan and Sheriff Jack Helm were known to be Sutton family allies. Aligning himself with the Taylor faction, Hardin participated in a series of violent clashes that added to his already considerable criminal record. The Bars of Captivity Justice finally caught up with Hardin in 1878 when he was arrested and sentenced to prison for murder. Meanwhile, during his prison term, he was convicted of another manslaughter charge for the earlier shooting of J.B. Morgan and was given a two-year sentence to be served concurrently with his unexpired 25-year sentence. Losing all the paths of freedom while incarcerated in Huntsville, Texas, he spent his time reflecting on his murderous deeds. This period of confinement marked a turning point in his life. A changed man, Hardin eventually adapted to prison life. While there, he read theological books, became the superintendent of the prison Sunday school, and studied law. Emerging from prison in 1894 after serving 15 years, Hardin claimed to have undergone a transformation. He professed to have found religion and sought to lead a law-abiding life. The most unbelievable thing is that he even sat for state's bar exam as he wished to get his license to practice law. Even though he successfully passed, his tainted past and reputation ensured that he would forever be viewed through a lens of suspicion. The final chapter. John Wesley Hardin was trying to live a normal life, but again and again, his acquaintances were getting targeted by law enforcement officers. An El Paso lawman, John Selman Jr., arrested Hardin's longtime acquaintance and part-time prostitute, the widow Morose, for brandishing a gun in public, which he claimed was wrong. He confronted Semon Jr. regarding this issue, and the two men had heated arguments. Even though that argument didn't cost anybody a penny, Selman Jr.'s father took it to heart. As a result, Selman Sr. was finding opportunities, and on the fateful day of August 19, 1895, when Constable John Selman shot him dead in an El Paso saloon, his violent life came to a dramatic end. The circumstances surrounding his death remain shrouded in mystery and controversy, with conflicting accounts adding to the intrigue. The Grave Enigma Even in death, Hardin's story did not find rest. A century later, his remains became the focus of a reburial controversy. Efforts to relocate his grave sparked debates about his legacy and the implications of honoring a man with a gruesome past. Between two groups, one claimed his own bloodline to keep him near his family land, while the other group was from El Paso's locals who wanted to prevent the move. When the matter reached the court, a subsequent lawsuit ruled in favor of keeping the body in El Paso. The chilling saga of John Wesley Hardin stands as a testament to the dark underbelly of the American frontier. From his early criminal exploits to his violent encounters with law enforcement officers, Hardin's life was a horrifying tale of bloodshed and terror. His legacy, riddled with ambiguity and controversy, continues to captivate and haunt those who dare to delve into the depths of his terrifying history. What do you think of the video? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like and hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.